Hello, Chef Garen here. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm making some crab rangoon. Actually, just rangoon. I'm going to give you some options to uh, for fillings to put in these. Okay, so let's get started. I have already made a batch earlier, and this is using a lobster flavored option. Okay, it's like the fake crab, but it's actually lobster flavored. There's also a king crab flavored. This is amazing, by the way. And I'm, today I'm going to be making another batch with fresh shrimp. These are cooked. I cooked them myself. They were frozen raw, and I just thawed them out and cooked them. These are baby shrimp. Okay. So, and the other ingredients we'll get to in a moment. But first things first, um, I'm going to use cream cheese. So 125 grams of cream cheese. You want to make sure it's nice and soft, so get it out on the counter early, bring it to room temperature. And this is 500 gram container of Philadelphia cream cheese, and I just used a quarter of it, okay? You don't have to measure stuff, as um, long as it's close, right? So there's the cream cheese. Let's take our shrimp, and I'm going to get them over to the food processor here. You don't have to use a food processor, you can just chop these up nice and small with your knife, if you wish. It's okay if they're a bit chunky, no big deal. But for me, it's all about texture. So I'm just going to whiz these up a little bit. I'm just going to pulse them so I have lots of control. So that is perfect. All right. So for whatever you're using, be it fake lobster, fresh lobster, fake crab, real crab, shrimp. We want about between 250 and 300 grams, okay? And that'll be perfect. Now we're gonna add our aromatics here. So I do have a teaspoon of light soy sauce and a teaspoon of what's this here sauce, okay? That can go in. And what's the difference between, between light and dark? Soy is, this is dark. When you tilt the bottle, it actually is black. This will make that filling black. You don't want that. We want a nice light soy sauce. So when you tilt the bottle, you can still see through it. Okay, this is for soup, sauces, marinades, and stuff like that. So that's in there. We also need uh, some spices, garlic powder, one teaspoon. Do not use garlic salt, okay? And one teaspoon of black pepper. I use freshly ground. And a little tiny bit of heat, you can use any type of chili powder you wish. I like to use this Korean red chili uh, pepper flakes, gochurugaru it's called. And I'm just going to put like a teaspoon or more in there. This is like, you can adjust this to your own taste, folks. It's really easy, okay? Don't worry about it. Don't stress about this. It's simple. You can't mess it up. Uh, I got about maybe half a cup of green onions. Finely chopped, you can use the green parts, the white parts, or both, it does not matter, okay? And that's pretty much it, guys. And I'm gonna give this a mix. Get it mixed in there really, really well. Okay, I've got this mixed really well. You can use your hand if you wish. And here's what we're looking at. Beautiful, it's like a paste, okay? Now I'm gonna mix this one <clears throat> with the batch I did earlier which is with the lobster. I'm just gonna mix them together. Okay, get those mixed really well, and then we'll move on to how we make them. So one more thing that's optional, which I like to do, is I like to add a little bit more onion flavor and some crunch. So this is optional. Put about a tablespoon of these crispy fried onions. And I'm just going to mix them in, and then we're going to actually get the, the wonton wrappers out, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how to form them. So for wonton wrappers, my preference are these ones by wings. They are the square ones, okay? And I'm just going to spread some out on our board here. So I have these spread out nicely. I'm going to do 12 at a time. I need some water and just a little bit of a, uh, just a small pastry brush. Okay. So first things first, we're going to take our filling and we're just going to put a little dab in the middle. 
could be up to a, t a teaspoon. I wouldn't go any more than that. Stick it right there in the middle like so on each one. You don't want to wet your wrappers too early. Let's just get these filled in. Okay, all ready to go here. So I have my pastry brush and water. I'm just going to dip it and I'm going to get the excess water off. I'm just going to go around the perimeter. Okay, I'm only going to do maybe three at a time here. We don't want that water to dry out. All right, so we're just going to pick up the corners. Meet in the middle. Give it a pinch. Okay, this corner can come up. This corner can come up. And we're just going to make, it's kind of like origami, right? We're going to pinch here and here. Make sure they're sealed, okay? We don't, when we fry these, we don't want the oil getting in. And then give that top piece a little pinch, okay? And there we have it. That is the traditional way of doing your rangoon. All right, let's do another one. Two corners, bring it to the middle. Bring this one up to the middle and this one up to the middle. Quite simple. Now the more filling you put in these, the harder this becomes. And this filling is really rich, so you do not want to put a lot in. It's not as enjoyable, okay? There we go, that's sealed really well. So the more of these you do, the better you will get at it. All right, and they become faster and faster. If you have kids, get them involved. They love doing stuff like this. It's like playing with Play-Doh. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna continue on and make the rest of these and then I'll get you over to the fryer and we'll, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Here's one tip I forgot to show you guys. When you open your wontons, they put starch in between each one so they don't stick together. But get that starch to your side up. And when it mixes with the water, it creates like a paste. Okay, so these are all done. Took me about uh, maybe half an hour. That is a lot of wontons or crab rangoon. My setup for deep frying is pretty simple. I have a nice big wok, about three inches of oil. I have something to scoop them out with. Okay, this is a, an Asian fishing net, we call it. And something to lay these on and a thermometer. You don't have to get something like this, guys. This is industrial. You don't need it. Just a digital thermometer is great. So I'm going to talk about something that's called double frying technique. And I've seen a lot of videos with wontons and egg rolls and, and crab rangoon. And no one's talking about this and no one's doing it. I want to teach you guys the, the technique that they do in restaurants. So when you order an egg roll or wontons or anything that's in a wrapper like this, generally they are pre-fried to set the... Um, the, the first fry will set the texture, give you that nice little bubbling texture on the outside and puff them up a little bit. The second fry, uh, we turn the heat up a little bit more and then we dip them in that hot oil and they get browned. Okay, so double fry is around 315 Fahrenheit, first fry, and second fry around 325, 330. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this the proper way, all right? If you guys like this video, uh, please click on the thumbs up. Uh, please follow, subscribe. doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me a lot. I would appreciate it. I want to hear your comments, good or bad. Okay, I will try to answer everybody. And also follow Chef Garen or check me out on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Okay, much appreciated. So let's get into this. So I'm going to get my oil up to 315 degrees Fahrenheit using a thermometer. Very important. That's the only way you know the temperature of your oil. Type of oil, any neutral flavored. So I'm going to use canola. Not the best choice, not the healthiest, but uh, it's not like we're going to be drinking it or anything, okay? So let's get going with this first fry set, okay? For dipping sauces, lots of options. <clears throat> Sweet and sour sauce, okay? You can use that. I like this one, this VH brand pineapple sauce. It's like a sweet and sour, but it has some pineapple in it. And the go-to for most people is a Thai chili sauce. But here's something you need to know, guys. They're not all created equal. So this one says, as you can see, for spring rolls. Get the one for spring rolls, okay? It's a bit thinner. It is amazing. It's not very strong. It's just perfect. It'll complement these things very well. Okay, show you how to do this with the uh, first fry. Safety first, nice big wok. You can use a, a nice heavy bottom pot that you would cook pasta in perhaps. 
but don't get the oil too close to the top, okay? So let's drop these in gently. You will see them to begin to bubble. And you're probably saying to yourself, Chef, these are going to get greasy. Well, to be honest with you, they're not going to get greasy because this is a wrap. It's, it's like a uh, it's like a dough, okay? If these were batter, then yes, at this low temperature, they would get greasy. Can you see what's happening here? Look at these beautiful little bubbles. We're setting up these little bubbles. Look at that. That is the texture that you're looking for. A little bit of brownness is okay. But as soon as I start to see them get brown, I'm going to start pulling them out. I don't want the color to get on these yet. Okay, that's that part is for the second fry. So if you're doing like a wonton, for example, with some raw filling, don't worry about this. You don't put a lot of filling in these, and the filling does get cooked very fast, okay? But with crab rangoon, most of your ingredients, pretty much all your ingredients are already pre-cooked. So I am happy with this, guys. Look at that. Check that out. Gorgeous. Look at those nice little bubbles. That is the secret to cooking wontons, crab ragoon, egg rolls, okay? So I'm going to keep going here. I'm just going to keep doing this. And when we're, when we're done, I'll come back and show you where I'm at. Another important, important tip is not to overcrowd your pot here, okay? You want to give these some room to float around, okay? It's a big swimming pool, and you don't want to overcrowd it. Also remember when you're deep frying, never walk away. All right, stay right here. So when we walk away, that things happen, okay? So if you're keeping an eye on this, nothing will go wrong, all right? And check the temperature of your oil every once in a while. Make sure it's not getting too hot. And when you're finished, you pull the oil off the heat, okay? Turn the burner off, but make sure you get this off the heat just in case you do forget to turn the heat off. Okay, so one last batch of our first fry, just to give you another close-up look here. Just let them sit there for a few moments, and then we're gently just going to loosen them up, and these will float to the surface pretty fast. Okay? And I just want to move them around gently. Move them around gently so they cook evenly. If you seal these properly, they will not break open, okay? Very important, you take a little bit of time and get these sealed up really nice so they don't break open and that filling kind of falls out into the oil. That would be a disaster. So take a little extra time. Okay, so first fry done. Have them all done, I'm gonna turn the heat off here remove these, and I'm going to take this pan off the heat. I will be showing you the second fry. I'm going to cook a few, but all of these are for a party I'm having here tomorrow evening. But the hard part now is done. And the second fry only takes 30, 40 seconds at a higher temperature, right around 325, 330 Fahrenheit. Let me bring you over. Nice and slowly here. Okay, let's have a look at this pan of crab rangoon. Look at that, guys. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm gonna let them cool down. I'm gonna put them into a bus pan, cover them over, and put them in my refrigerator until tomorrow night. Okay, second fry, oil is up to 330. I'm just gonna cook a couple here just to show you. We just want to move these around again, and what we're looking for now is just the color and the crunch, all right? Don't get them too uh, too dark because they will be overcooked, and they'll just crumble in your hand, right? It'll be very, be very hard to chew. So I'm getting some color on these now, I can see. Beautiful looking. We're almost there. I'm going to turn the heat off here now because I'm pretty much done with this oil. And uh, this oil, you can let it cool. Let it cool down to room temperature. Strain it. 
put it back into a container and you can reuse it. Okay? You can reuse it until it starts to stink. There we go, guys. Look at these. Beautiful. Excellent color, nice crunch. Let's get them on the plate. So let's go over here. I'm going to cut one open for you. And show you what that filling looks like. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. See if we can get it in there nice and uh, focused for you. There we go. Excellent. Now, some dipping sauce. I'm going to go with the red chili, sweet red chili for... It has to be the sweet red chili. See how thin that is? It's beautiful. You want the, the, uh, the stuff, the sweet chili sauce for spring rolls, okay? Nice. Oh my god. So this recipe... You can actually taste the seafood in there. You, you can actually taste that. It's not all cream cheese. It is amazing, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, please like and follow. Would appreciate that. Have yourself a great day.